Hi, this is Dr. Nancy Reed, and this is part five of University of Lynchburg's ophthalmology lecture series for the Masters of Physician Assistant Studies. This topic is going to be conjunctival disorders, and we're going to cover um, three broad areas of conjunctival disorders. We're going to talk about viral conjunctivitis, bacterial conjunctivitis, and under that we will do three specific subsections um, that talk about gynecological infection, chlamydial infection, and ophthalmia neonatorium. And then finally we're going to talk about allergic conjunctivitis. So conjunctivitis is the most common eye disease. It can come in two different types, acute or chronic. Most cases are due to viral um, or bacterial, including gonococcal and chlamydial infections. The mode of trans transmission for infectious conjunctivitis includes you know, fingers touching eyes, um, sharing towels or handkerchiefs. This conjunctivitis must be differentiated from more dangerous conditions such as acute uveitis, acute glaucoma, and corneal disorders. So we're going to first talk about viral conjunctivitis. Viral conjunctivitis is most commonly caused by adenovirus. It's a bilateral disease. The disease typically shows up in one eye first and then um, within a couple of days moves to the second eye. And there um, will be copious watery discharge. In addition, viral conjunctivitis, there uh, has the physical exam finding of preauricular lymphadenopathy, which is different from all the other different types of conjunctivitis that we'll talk about. Infection spreads easily. Um, some examples are contaminated swimming pools, eye clinics where they don't clean off the uh, eye apparatuses between usage. Signs and symptoms um, can last 10 to 14 days. And the treatment for viral conjunctivitis is just supportive by using cold compresses. There's no role in antibiotics uh, for antibiotics in viral conjunctivitis. Adenovirus uh, will have corneal infiltrates that might benefit from topical corticosteroids or cyclosporines. Here is a classic presentation of what viral conjunctivitis looks like. You will see the conjunctiva is um, red and there is uh, excess fluid. It looks like lots of tearing, but that's actually the watery discharge uh, that is uh, associated with viral conjunctivitis. And you can see crusting on um, the lid margins. We're going to go on and talk about bacterial conjunctivitis. They're uh, most common causative agents that are not gonorrhea and chlamydia, which we'll talk about separately, um, are staphylococcal, uh, MRSA, streptococca, haemophilus, pseudomonas, and moraxilla. And the classic presentation of bacterial conjunctivitis is copious purulent discharge. And we'll talk more about this in a second, but if there's hyperpurulent, just, just tons and tons and tons of discharge, you gotta start thinking that you might have a gonococcal infection uh, versus one of the agents that we talked about above. So treatment is uh, topical sulfonamides or oral antibiotics for two to three days. Um, topical fluoroquinolones are rarely justified. And so here is an example of that purulent exudate. And you can see that that was much more uh, of a discharge than with the viral uh, conjunctivitis. And this is more purulent and the viral was more watery. So moving on to, to specific antibiotic conjunctivitis um, that is of specific of special interest is gonococcal conjunctivitis. It's usually acquired through contact with infected uh, genital secretions and this is an ophthalmologic emergency. Uh, you can have corneal involvement which can lead to corneal ulcers and corneal perforations. 
uh, treatment is a single uh, one gram dose of IM ceftriaxone. Uh, you can use topical fluoroquinolone drops uh, such as ciprofloxin and guidafloxin. Screen for other sexually transmitted disease and they routinely treat for chlamydial, inf chlamydial infections as well. Um, there are two different types of chlamydial conjunctivitis. There's trichomona and inclusion conjunctivitis. So trichomona, uh, we're going to talk about trachoma we're going to talk about here um, because for those of you who are lucky enough to get to go on medical missions you may see this it's the most common infectious cause of blindness worldwide about 40 million people are affected the endemic areas for trachoma are North Africa Middle East India and Southeast Asia and about 1.3 million uh, people have profound vision loss it spreads from direct and indirect contact with affected person's eyes or noses. Uh, and indirect contact through towel sharing, makeup sharing, and then flies landing on one person and moving to the next. So the etiology is chlamydia trachomatis. Recurrent episodes in childhood can cause bilateral follicular conjunctivitis, epithelial keratitis, corneal vascularizations, and healing can leave you with entropion, which causes that interning of the eyelids, which then can lead to corneal scarring um, and trachiasis. Treatment is oral azithromycin one gram, and one of the other treatments that you have to do is you have to improve hygiene and living conditions, if at all possible. Inclusion conjunctivitis is caused by contact with genital tract and there usually is a history of a new sexual partner in the preceding two months. Etiology is chlamydia trachomatis stereo, uh, serotypes D through K. Signs and symptoms include acute redness, uh, usually unilateral. You can have partialin exudate. And you're going to have this follicular conjunctivitis with a foreign body feeling. Uh, healing leaves no uh, sequelae. So these people usually don't have the issues that the people with trachomona have. Treatment adults will get oral azithromycin. Um, and newborns um, can get antibiotic ointment uh, and IV antibiotics because it can cause blindness in newborns. So Moving on to newborns, there's a condition, it's called neonatal conjunctivitis or ophthalmia neonatorium. And it is a conjunctivitis that occurs within the first month of life. There are um, some different causes of it to include gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes. You can get a chemical conjunctivitis because of uh, medication that we put in the eyes to prevent chlamydia and gonorrhea transmission and then you can also have viral. The, the thing that is very concerning is the gonorrhea and the chlamydia and so in order to prevent that uh, many places uh, around the world and here in the United States when the child is born within the first 24 hours they'll get um, erythromycin 0.5% ophthalmic uh, ointment put in the eye. We used to use silver nitrate or tetracycline and those are not FDA approved anymore. Um, but here in the United States we still recommend that this treatment um, take place within 24 hours to prevent uh, any kind of infection. Allergic conjunctivitis is a uh, typically a benign condition that occurring late in childhood and early in adulthood and the signs and symptoms include itching so whenever you see a conjunctivitis with an itchy eye you're thinking allergic. There's also going to be redness. Th this discharge in this type of conjunctivitis is more of a stringy discharge. Sometimes people will complain of photophobia and vision loss. They'll also sometimes have chemosis. In the picture here at the top is what chemosis looks like and it literally is a puffiness of the eye that stops at the edge of the limbus and there's that limbus again we talked about. 
Um, this can be very concerning to look at. Um, I, I experienced this. I was a brand new PA and I went to a field exercise in Grafenvir and a lot of the soldiers were allergic to something while they're out there and they had this chemosis and it, it can be very uh, alarming um, but is easily treated with uh, a mast cell stabilizer or antihistamine. Also, if you flip the eyelid around, you'll see this cobblestone papilla on the underneath side of the eye. The treatment for this is uh, ophthalmo uh, ophthalmologic solutions that include antihistamines, mast cell stabilizers, and eosinophil inhibitor activities. You can also uh, take oral antihistamines that is typically very effective for allergic conjunctivitis as well. So conjunctivitis, um, there are palpebral uh, appearance and then there are follicular appearance if you flip the eyelid around. And this uh, papilla uh, ha is seen in allergic and bacterial conjunctivitis, these little red dots in varying sizes, it's a nonspecific appearance. The follicles are uh, seen in chlamydia and viral uh, conjunctivitis, and they're avascular white nodules, and they're filled with lymphocytes. So when you try to describe this to somebody, just make sure like if it has the white appearance, that's a follicle. Um, and if it has that um, bumpy appearance, that's a papilla. So here's a table just summarizing um, the types of conjunctivitis. Uh, bacterial usually has a copious purulent to mucopurulent discharge. Viral is typically bilateral. It starts in one eye and moves the other eye within a couple of days. And there is uh, the preauricular lymphadenopathy, which is not seen in the other types of conjunctivitis. The discharge in the viral conjunctivitis is that serous mucoid appearance. And allergic conjunctivitis um, has the papilla on the underneath side um, and potentially some um, follicles. And it has a ropey mucoid appearance. And chlamydial uh, conjunctivitis has a mucoid appearance. So that's just a summary slide to kind of help um, summarize all the types of conjunctivitis.